All right, folks, we are into the battles now. So this is the Battle of Little Bighorn, and you should have these notes. Now, here's the thing. This one needs some background, but you guys already know a lot of the background. You know that people have been moving out west, okay? You know that that's been going on. You know that that was Native American land. So you know how you'd feel if somebody starts moving in, right? You've been having for decades now some conflict between the cavalry of the U.S. Army and Native Americans. Native Americans were often known for quick smash and grab sort of fighting. And the army would get mad because they wouldn't line up on the field and fight them. But that would be silly because Native Americans didn't have cannons, huge armies. They were used to more raiding type wars and trying to maybe ambush some of the army. The army spent a lot of its time trying to track down where the Native Americans were to try to have a bigger battle to defeat them. This was an issue they were having. George Armstrong Custer, his job, and his whole sort of standing in the world and in the Army in the United States depended on him being able to beat the Sioux, to find them, to capture them, to defeat them in battle. Okay, so understand that as we get ready for the Battle of Little Bighorn, which is also known in Native American circles as the Battle of the Greasy Grass. So George Custer was the American colonel of the 7th Cavalry Colonel. He had been a general during the Civil War, and then that was only during wartime, so during peacetime, which this technically was, he was moved back and he became a colonel. You have Sitting Bull. That's his nemesis. Sitting Bull and the Lakota Sioux were camped on the Little Bighorn River in Montana. When, they're, when they say they're camped there, you have to understand that we're not just talking about the warriors of the Sioux. We are talking about the women, the children, everybody, because their whole towns would move, right? In 1876, General Custer led a group of about 225 soldiers against the Lakota Sioux. General Custer and all of his men died. I think there were like two Native Americans from another tribe who had been working with Custer who lived, but all of the army, all of the soldiers, they all died. So Sitting Bull and the Lakota Sioux, this is number three, won the Battle of Little Bighorn. Now I want to take you back here for just one second. All right, this is just really quickly to give us a look at kind of what the battlefield had. Custer thought that he had discovered where a lot of the Native Americans were, and he was going to attack them and try to surprise them. And they were going to come, and they were going to capture them in this valley, and he had one, peop one group of the army was supposed to come in one part of the valley and the others in another part, and he was going to ride in and surprise them. Well, what he ended up finding was he found all of the Lakota Sioux. Not part of the Lakota Sioux, but all of the Lakota Sioux, and all of their warriors. And these warriors weren't by themselves. He caught the whole encampment, so his women and children there. So when the Lakota Sioux came out to fight, they came out to defend their families. They weren't just going to run away. Custer ended up being outmanned, outmaneuvered, out of this valley. His backup had been cut off from him, and it goes all the way around to Last Stand Hill right here in this area where Custer and all his men died. Custer messed up. He thought he was the better general. He was too fast, too aggressive. He got caught. All his men died. Okay, so this happens in 1876, but the big, such a big part of it isn't even the loss for the army. It's what happened afterwards. After the Battle of Little Bighorn, more troops were sent to the Great Plains and Native Americans were forced onto reservations. And I want to make sure you're thinking about the year 1876. This is also why Reconstruction ended. So you have the U.S. Uh, government is going to start taking its attention away from the South and putting it out West in this idea of manifest destiny. Their troops all got wiped out. They're going to try to make sure this doesn't happen again. They're going to send more troops, and they're going to be even harsher with the Native Americans. So this is one of those things that starts off as a victory for people like the Lakota Sioux that actually turns into a defeat. So Sitting Bull of course, was opposed or against westward 
expansion. Take a look at the different pictures on here. You should be able to see Sitting Bull. You see Custer's Last Stand. I want you to be identify where this happened. Okay? You can see where the Great Sioux Reservation is, where the Battle of Little Bighorn is. So start putting that all together. Okay? And that's going to be it for right now.